Richard, there was an article published this morning in the Financial Times saying that Chancellor Rishi Sunak had wasted 11 billion in unneeded interest payments to the banks. But then you tweeted out today amazing analysis that in fact the situation was much worse. Can you explain in layman's terms, if you can, quite how much this government is propping up banks? Let me explain what happens when QE takes place or when the government spends quantitative easing, this is, or even just when the government spends money, the money has to leave the Bank of England and go into the commercial banking system. And it does that through something called the central bank reserve accounts. Most people have never heard of them, but they're fundamental to the way in which the banking system operates. Basically, it's the money that is held by the commercial banks with the Bank of England so that the commercial banks can pay each other. Now, way back when the financial crisis started in 2008, um, there was only around 40 billion in these accounts because the banks trusted each other. Then the banks stopped trusting trusting each other for really good reason. And the Bank of England basically had to suddenly put a lot of money in these accounts to boost them so that the banks did not fall over because they fell out with each other. I mean, we had enough banks fall over. They didn't want any more. And that's what QE really did post-2008. Yeah, and the interest rates for this reserve was very low, but the banks then, you know, when they charge interest, the much higher 6%, the bank, the sort of the quantitative easing, the much lower interest rates. So this was beneficial for the banks, rather than just liquidity, it was also earning them money. Effectively, this provided them with a substantial sum of money then, 450 billion then. And since COVID, another 450 billion. So now 900 billion in all has been basically gifted to the banks into their central bank reserve accounts, on which the government then says, we'll pay you interest. The banks did nothing to generate this money. They didn't save it. They've been basically gifted it by the government to keep them going. And then the government says, we'll pay interest. Now, that was no problem when the interest rate on the Bank of England official rate was 0.1%. But it's now 1% and it's expected to go up to 1.25% in the next week. And some people are talking about it rising to maybe 3, 4, 5%. Adam Posen, who used to be on the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee. And has appeared on here. Yes, appeared on Byline TV. Yeah. He wants it to go to 4% or more. Now, in that case, 4% on 900 billion is 36 billion or more a year. And that is money that the government would be paying out to the banks as pure profit on something they've never really earned and which will be used by the government as an excuse to impose poverty, austerity, cuts, civil service job losses and everything else on the rest of society. So this consequence of quantitative easing, the government supporting the banks in this way, is going to be that the rest of us are going to suffer massive penalty unless something is done. Now, and, FD- But meanwhile, the financial services industry, of which Sunak was kind of a part of, will, will be secure and pay each other big bonuses, I assume. So there's a kind oh, of more massive. inequality. This is going to provide the most massive boost to the profits of the banks that they've seen since 2008. You know, frankly, they are literally laughing themselves well all the way to the bank um, because they're going to be making so much money. Now, that is obviously unacceptable. Well, it is to me, and I suspect it will be to most people. So what I put out this morning was a thread which simply said there are things we can do about this. And I suggested... And one was a windfall tax, wasn't it? Yes, sorry to interrupt. One One of them was a windfall tax. One of them was a windfall tax. I mean, compared to the amount of extra money that the energy companies are making, this actually makes them look like positive good guys. Um, So, you know, hard to believe, but actually... Mm, Difficult act to follow. Yeah, quite. And I've suggested that there should be a windfall tax. And I've even suggested a tax rate for that windfall tax. I suggested 100%. On these profits. In other words, they haven't earned this money, so why should they keep this money? If the bank of England- It's basically money being given to them by printed out by the government to help their liquidity, which now given to them, which are now they're charging interest on. To the government, yes. Unbelievably. You know, it's extraordinary that they should exploit a situation where basically they were bust in 2008 and they've now won 900 billion of support and yet. 
they're now going to charge the government for the privilege of having helped them. That's unacceptable. And today, isn't it, with that 11 billion uh, supposed interest rate um, mistake Sunak has made, it's just indicated more this bizarre world, which is not geared towards our productive needs. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what uh, is the situation, Peter. We need to change from this make-believe world of financial fantasy, which Sunak lives in. After all, he was a banker and move to a real world where we're talking about how we release the potential of this country to make lives better for people. And that's what I want politicians to do, to take on the financial services sector, to say to the City of London, do what you can where you are adding value, but don't use everybody's money for financial speculation. Instead, let's liberate that to do good. Brilliant. Richard, well, we'll hear more from you, no doubt. You'll have your article and what a great mission you're on. Thanks for talking to us.